their goal is to make as much money as possible, right? To get as many uh, sort of customers as possible. People are doing whole startups that just do this one thing. But getting caught up in that is probably going to be a lot of startups that are going to be uh, just sort of rolled over. I, I really look at, you know, the, some of these things that we're going to talk about, like perhaps with the Dynamics 365 agents, I, that a lot of these agents really are, people are doing whole startups that just do this one thing. And so this sort of, I, I, I kind of think where this whole agents era that we're going into is redefining sort of what startups can do, what big companies can do. We're definitely seeing the big tech companies move a lot faster uh, than they have, you know, in the past. And we're also seeing that they've got this huge advantage of having data, of having, you know, uh, these third-party integrations and stuff like that, that startups often just don't have. So if making the agents ends up not being hugely comp complicated, that people can either do it in Copilot Studio themselves or Microsoft can do it for them, then we may see like a lot of these startups just not get to a point of even if they've you know got some product market fit that might be taken away by the big companies so i, I think this is a really interesting point to look at as well is that you know uh, is this their goal you know uh, my guess is their goal is to make as much money as possible right to get as many uh, sort of customers as possible uh, but getting caught up in that is probably going to be a lot of startups that are going to be uh, just sort of rolled over. It's amazing that they've got a hundred thousand organizations that they've gotten to, to basically try out Copilot and actually start building some of these uh, agents. And my guess is that they've seen patterns, right? They've seen, okay, this is what these kind of orgs want. This is what sales orgs want. This is what marketing orgs want. And from that, my, you know, it, it seems to me that what, what they're doing then is taking that along to their coders or their agent builders internally and sort of saying, okay, this is what people want to do. How do we do this with agents? And you know, my guess is there's probably some really good things going on behind the scenes, meaning that you know, with the agents, often there are lots of steps that, that, uh, you know, that may not appear to actually do anything where you're getting the agent to sort of reflect on what it's done and think about, did it do the right thing? And maybe getting a different model involved or something like that to sort of judge the output and go, yes, and check itself or that kind of thing. So the first, you know, they, they, they talk about a number of key things in here. First one is sort of sales. Uh, and I think they're actually being quite conservative uh, here. And so, so this is kind of interesting. This might be, uh, you know, we could ask ourselves, is this because the models are not quite good enough yet? So they've got like sales qualify, uh, you know, a sales qualification agent, which seems to be sort of doing lead scoring. Uh, but it's mostly focused on inbound leads. So you could imagine that they don't want to be known for being the spam agent that, you know, just spams everyone on LinkedIn or something like that. So I guess that's a good, a good thing. But, you know, having this thing, it, it will definitely help salespeople, right? It will definitely help them prioritize what leads are coming in, uh, what, you know, drafting personalized outreach emails, being able to follow up things, combining it with some of the other agents that they've got, uh, you know, of where they're sort of uh, doing, um, you, you know, uh, customer service and stuff like that. You could imagine that putting a couple of these agents together uh, they'll be able to have their salespeople reach out to people automatically uh, and then get, you know, sort of pre-qualify them is my guess through a number of emails uh, kind of thing. So that's something the startups are working on, right? We've seen uh, that there are startups out there doing literally just focusing on agents for lead gen. Uh, it's very common uh, sort of thing. It's one of the, th you know, popular things that people are doing with Crew AI, with LangGraph, with this kind of thing. Uh, so for them to do that, I think that that's really fascinating. Um, they've got some other really interesting ones around supply chain uh, management. You've got a person sitting in the middle, literally just seeing like, okay, what parts are going to arrive at the factory on time and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, what's being, uh, what's taking too long to arrive? What are the potential delays that could happen here? Uh, you know, confirming the order de delivery dates, that kind of thing. And it, 
it does make sense that there's probably a lot of jobs out there like this at the moment that could be 95% automated. And so maybe you don't get, you know, maybe, you, you know, it's not that you're going to have agents just do this and you're not going to have any humans, but maybe you only need one human to do what five people were doing in the past with this kind of agent system. Uh, th this is something that I, you know, actually is quite funny when I was looking at this because recently I, I had a friend who reached out to me who was uh, retired and thinking of com take, coming back had been offered a job basically doing this kind of thing of just sitting at home, checking, you know, deliveries for a, a company that were ordering things. And sure enough, my friend was like, hey, you know, do you think this is something I could do with an agent? And I was like, yeah, you probably could, right? And sure enough, literally Microsoft now has rolled out something that would probably do, you know, 90% of what he was going to be doing. Uh, so I think, you know, there's a bunch of these. Um, where do, out, of the, the, you know, out of the ones that they released, what do you find the most interesting ones? So the sales qualification agent uh, was the first one on their list. Um, you know, I noticed that they, they're synthesizing sizing data from the CRM data, third party data and then public information on the web. And these, these feel like the, you know, these three distinct areas that Microsoft can be really good at, right? So they've got the CRM, right? And that's their yeah. Dynamics 365, right? So, and, and that's the one they're competing against Salesforce. Yeah, Salesforce, right? yeah. The other story VentureBeat wrote uh, yesterday was around the database integration they're doing. They spent a lot of time right. integrating this into this fabric platform so that you can have this rag kind of natively done. You're not going to some other database to pull this stuff in. So your pipeline, on RAG is simplified, uh, pr presumably. Um, then they're checking these these third-party sources. Again, we talked about the connectors that the Microsoft has to all yeah. these different uh, partners in the ecosystem. And then public information. They've, they've got a browser, right? They've, they've got Edge. And um, so they have all the pieces and they're stepping forward with this stuff really smartly. I think, um, you know, if you're looking at some of the other ones that caught my eye, maybe because uh, I can relate, but you know, there, there's this time and expense agent for contractors yeah. who are submitting expenses, right? So it does things like checking your calendar to see what sort of meetings you had for this client that you're trying to bill, right? Or to, to, to get an expense report for. It's checking your emails for for receipts. It's checking the policies of of you know things like overtime and in, in, in your contract and making it all easy so that you can just go about your contracting role. For your client rather than spend, you know, you know, you know, you, you, I don't know about you, but I spent when I was doing this sort of thing, I would spend a month kind of trying to avoid filling out the expenses because it was uh, such a pain. I, um, I, I think all of these are aligned with its application strength. Again, really smart. It is interesting that that it, the breadth here as well, meaning like that this is not, you know, the sales ones, yes, that's clearly, you know, a shot at Salesforce and and, and that makes a lot of sense, you know, going for that. But it's really interesting that they have got, you know, from that right through to sort of uh, customer service and even these sort of field service agents, this sort of scheduling operations agents that, you know, th this is not the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of an agent, but it sounds like, okay, if you did, you know, have some kind of service company where you've got to send people out, you want to make sure you're sending out the right person for the job because it's going to waste a hell of a lot of money uh, having the person go out there and go, oh yeah, sorry, this is not me. You need to get Joe to come and do this kind of yeah. thing. So knowing sort of like the availability, location, skill set, that kind of stuff. I um, and So I find this really interesting is that this is not something that I would have thought of as being like, oh yeah, you definitely, that's the agent to go for. Yet my guess is that Microsoft is, has spoken to a lot of companies that have said, oh, now if you could just help us with this, this would save us quite a lot of money. That you could imagine that for each of these, Microsoft's probably had many companies ask for this. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like, um, going through this list, I kind of feel like these are not the things that are perhaps the sexiest agents, you know, that, you know, they're not the thing of like, oh, I'll go out and do all the research for you on the internet and bring you something back and, you know, prepare your slides and do all of that. Actually, that's not what's here, right? This is much more stuff that like, okay, you, if you use an agent to do this, you can see it's going to save time. It's going to save money. 
right? And, and this is what struck me about this, right? A lot of the sort of demos that we've seen, you know, over the past year with agents have been much more focused on the sort of sexy things that can be done on, you know, it, it, that kind of thing. And often they're sort of saying, well, you know, this is not quite ready yet, but in a year's time, you'll be able to have your agent just make that sales presentation with the slides, with all this. Microsoft seems to have sort of realized that, okay, well, maybe we can't do any, you know, all of that yet because we don't have the best models or the best models are just not out yet. I, but what we can do is can help people save money and help people save time uh, and help people reduce the sort of, uh, you know, the backlog of actual sort of thinking tasks uh, with these kind of things. And, you know, if, if picking off almost maybe the, the, the applications that were being provided by the RPA vendors, right? UiPath, yeah, Auto very much. Anywhere, Blue Prism, right? Where they, they, they had these automations, but they were somewhat brittle because... They had to all be pre be determined, and I think what they're realizing, Microsoft is realizing, is that you could use natural language and and LLMs to make this so much more fluid, right? Um, you know, another e example is the sales order agent, right? It, where where the, the agent is doing most of the work, tracking all these orders that are coming in, checking inventory, checking the quote, and, and correspondence, and basically kind of furnishing up. And I see this a lot in these app these, these applications. They're furnishing up a recommendation. And so getting away from kind of doing the entire thing, but making that, that work so much easier for the, for the uh, human than just to check out, oh, yep, yeah, this looks good, and then move on. And then learning from that and then potentially down the line getting something that's even more automated. I, I do think, yeah, this is a big play against the, the sort of incumbent RPA companies. I, from my experience with the R RPA, you know, talking to companies who are using them, they find it very frustrating because they have to get certain staff to get specially trained up on this. You know, then they've got to try and hang on to those staff. And, and like you said, they're extremely brittle uh, that, you know, if something changed slightly, okay, the, the sort of RPA expert has to come back and look at the thing. If suddenly all this now just moves to natural language, you can say, hey, uh, it's not pressing the right button anymore because the UI changed and it can sort of work it out. That's pretty cool. And I think that's going to give them a huge advantage uh, in yeah. this. I, now, that doesn't mean we should talk about too, though, that that doesn't mean they're going to be the only one for very long, right? So this is, uh, everyone's working on these things, uh, you know, uh, so uh, the question is, does Google now look at this and go, ah, so that's the, the agents people want. Okay, well, we can build those in two weeks and we can roll those out and show people as well, show customers as well.